you gonna, what you gonna do with that Deserto? Do what, do what, do that, do that, do that Do what, do that, do that, do that, do that Do what, do that, do that, do that, do that So off to the main course We have the Waratahs and Hurricanes on buys this week Game one for the week is the Force versus the Rebels. The Force get their first home game in front of the Sea of Blue back and forth with a COVID-free Australia, essentially, at the moment. Uh, returning for this, I found really interesting. Both Jordan Ulysses and Gerald Skelton are already on the plane over in, in Perth. So Ulysses had his hand injury and was expected to miss three weeks. He's missed one. And Gerald Skelton had a pin and plate inserted into his leg for a minor fracture. Again, was meant to miss another three weeks. That means Skelton, if he's looking at playing, is probably a few weeks after that fracture pin and plate. Like, just mental. But obviously, they're both in the mix. Otherwise, you wouldn't take them. Yeah, look, surely you don't send them across if they're not in the mix, but it just doesn't really add up. No, not at all. Uh, look, Kagi, Ka- mm. not here today, but he did make an input. He wants Issy Nasirani back in the team. And, <laughs> I mean, that's only because he's in his fantasy side. But to be yeah. honest, I wouldn't mind seeing it either. It's not going to happen. He's not in the plane. Otherwise, we would have heard about it. So he's still working back to try and get his strength back after his knee operation. Uh, the one other name that I think uh, has kind of come out in the headlines this week is Sidaleki Tamani, the ex-Wallaby and Waratah ex-Force man as well. 34 years old, he's just signed for the Western Force and he's back in the in the squad for the rest of the year. So I guess eligible immediately. He's back, back home from France for family reasons. He's been Clement. signed as an injury replacement. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't think you'll see him straight away. I think they'll they'll try and... You know, give a bit of respect to Jeremy Thrush and you're not taking Fergus Lee Warner off. So maybe not this week, but that's pretty exciting. Yeah, look, I, I'm questioning how much we actually see him this year. You know, there's not that long as, as you know, Super Rugby AU season. And, I mean, Thrush has, has been decent and he's been there for a few years. And, I mean... They need, get, they need <clears throat> game line. Though. They don't have many runners. He's that kind of big body that can oh, actually punch through a hole. I can see it. But my, my one need. thought with them is, well, is they haven't wanted to rush all their overseas players in. Like, we still haven't seen Miotti starting. He barely started this week, but not previously. You know, he hasn't been in the system. I don't know if they'll want to throw him in the deep end quickly, but yeah, hopefully we're going to see him play some footy. Well, you mentioned Domingo Miotti. I think the question on everyone's lips is, is he going to start? They brought him off the bench last week. They started Jack, Jake McIntyre, who I thought looked good. He attacked the line a little bit better as well. I think there's no doubt that Domingo Miotti is the guy with the highest ceiling right now out of their three fly halves. Do you think he'll start? I I put my money. It's, it's going off gut feeling, but I'm going to put my money on that he does this week. Yeah. Um, I just don't think McIntyre had that attack that they needed. Gabelli maybe did a little bit better, but I'd love to see those two guys continue, you know, their their bond together as rugby players coming across from Argentina. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I, I like to think that we'll see him, but obviously there's no no insights there on training squads or anything from over in the Western Force. <clears throat> um, you know, the, the Western Force have had their troubles getting over the game line and scoring their own points. Uh, the <clears throat> Rebels... I don't think they've scored a try yet, right? They've just scored 15 million penalty kicks and off the back of Tamua, Powell, Hodge, those guys kind of controlling the back line, Marika Corabetti just being given license to do whatever he wants. With the exception of maybe Corabetti just picking the ball up and running 90 metres from the back of a ruck, how do they score tries? I don't know. Look, for me, this is a game I'm interested in to see, a bit of a grudge match between the two sides, and it's going to be built up like that. And I'm, I'm actually really excited to see this one. I just hope it doesn't turn into, you know, neither team being able to score tries and it becoming a penalty fest. Yeah, that's my gut feeling. I think um, the Rebels have shown in the first two games so far this year that they have the ability to make you play badly. Yep. The Western Force have that ability as well to make to play themselves badly. play badly. <laughs> <laughs> They've been at does. Uh, robbed. We we're definitely robbed. <laughs> they, made, they made us play badly all season. All that's, season. that's right. <laughs> now, look, in, in all seriousness, though, the Rebels ha- have a very solid defensive line, play yep. good territory. I could see the Western Force wanting to play a bit of a territory game back against them and it becoming a bit of a kick fest. Probably not going to be one for uh, the... It's going to be one for the Rusted On fans. That's that's for sure. That's about it. Um, no. I Go on. Give it a chance. 
Yeah. Mate, this, my, my call is it's going to be a kick fest. The Rebels don't have a big attack. The Western Force don't have a big attack. And when the Rebels actually start rushing up, the only way I can see that this game opens up is Marika Korobedi does his thing. Or I think the Force have to be really, really dominant at breakdown because if they can get Adeline and get through the breakdown and get quick ball, then it's going to be harder for the Rebels to actually enforce themselves in defence. And then they might actually be able to throw the ball wide and get the, the ball into the hands of, you know, Claire Ralston or mm. Tony Pulu or something like that. But honestly, I, I don't see that happening. I, I really like Brian Stunder and, you know, Tim Anstey was exceptional on the weekend. I, I think I, I don't really see how that happens. There, I, I look. I don't disagree with anything you said. I'm just trying to be positive for some Aussie rugby. But look, I, I think their attack is going to come through their locks and potential locks, right? Coming through Anstey, coming through Lee Warner, and some of the stuff they did in tight. I think you add Kubeli to that, you know, and and a bit more time with them. That's going to add a bit bit more oomph in, in tight and give them maybe you know potential more opportunities. Add Miotti to it, and I think that'll that'll work as well. And hopefully they can get the ball a little bit wider. But it, there's a good chance this becomes a kick fest, and the only way it can't be for me is get Miotti amongst it. You know what? I'd like to see Kane Gateka have a rest <clears throat> for Thomas Lozano at number seven, open side. Get Anstey, Lozano, Stunder, Fergus Lee Warner. You're starting to get a little bit more impact, and you know maybe, maybe that is a with, along with Miotti coming in as well. Yeah, that could be enough. All right. Uh, so, what's your what's your call? Uh, look, I think the impact of losing Reddy is not going to affect them at all. He's... <laughs> well, they got Jack Winchester, who can surely do no less than punch someone in the head and get sent immediately off. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I just I don't think Reddy. He, he hasn't shown us something he showed us while he was at the Reds a handful of years ago. But right. look, he he obviously has a three week ban, and and I think the the big point with there is Katu managers. Uh, are going to be just licking their lips because you're going to get many more minutes. And Kaitu has been really good for fantasy. I think he got 40-odd or 50-odd points on the weekend. Yeah, he's excellent. Um, look, for me, I, I think you're going to probably echo this and agree. I think the Rebels are going to win this one. I don't think they're going to run away and score lots of tries. So, you know, six points. Yeah, a couple of penalties, three, three points, six points. Yeah, I agree. I think the force will be really, really passionate early. Yeah, if they could break the game open and make the rebels chase and make the rebels try and actually have to attack, I think that that could make the game really interesting. Yep. But I think the rebels are really disciplined, and I think I, I agree. It's going to go down to a fine margin. Just to disagree with you for fun, I'll go the force by three. Yeah, look, I think the rebels have a way to work themselves in a game by taking their points. Taz came came out and, and tried to give him a crack. You know, same idea with the force, but um, yeah, I don't know. 